don't know if any of you all noticed just yet, but the internet is kind of a scary place. While generally user-friendly, there are certain areas of the web that aren't for the faint of heart. Among the more unpleasant areas are topics associated with words, statements, or keywords that you are told to never search. I'm sure many of you have seen articles or videos simply titled, Don't Search This, or some version variation of that. I'm also certain that many of you likely searched it anyways. The Japanese internet is no stranger to this concept. As a matter of fact, words you should never search are kind of a big deal in Japan. So much so that these topics have their own wiki and there are multiple tiers to how dangerous these terms actually are. Heck, there's even been books that have been published discussing these forbidden search terms. I actually bought one not too long ago. It was more of a National Enquirer kind of thing, not, not worth the money, but moving on. These search terms have a specific title that they're associated with. The Japanese title for these terms is Kensaku Shite Haikenai Kotoba, or Words You Should Never Search. What these essentially are are keywords and search terms that one should, in theory, never search on the internet. Some of these are Japanese in origin, while others are created outside of Japan and gain traction and notoriety within Japan. With that said, we are going to look into these terms, and we're not just gonna look into these terms, we're really gonna look into them. And by that I mean I went ahead and made a whole ass iceberg. Well, this thing wasn't the efforts of solely myself. I had a lot of help from my friend Jorge, who you may know from his channel where he talks about, you know, other stuff that is creepy. I'm sure you've heard of him. He helped out a lot with putting together the iceberg and gauging if something was actually truly creepy or not. Also, I'm kind of a wuss and couldn't look them up on my own. So, yeah. Thank you. And since this is a whole iceberg, this could take a while, and because of that, I'm making this a whole series. One episode per tier. Yay. And like I said, originally before the iceberg, these search terms were already categorized under what this wiki calls Kikendo, or danger level. There are seven levels in total. Each episode will explore one tier level, so of course, the subject matter within these episodes will get darker as each new episode is released. Again, yay! Right now, we're only on episode one though, and naturally, there's not gonna be anything that's really that disturbing, just mainly for the lulls. We have a lot of work to do though, so let's go ahead and get started with tier one of Kensaku Shite Haikenai Kotoba. Charge Man Ken. Already off to an excellent start. Charge Man Ken is an anime from the 1970s that's known for its horrendous and even laughable production value. Think Speed Racer, but only five minutes in length per episode, animated in PowerPoint, and making absolutely zero sense. No wait, scratch that. Think a Dingo Pictures movie? But it's anime! <laughs> The episodes are bizarre as heck and are pretty baffling out of context. Actually, there's barely any context given to begin with. The anime itself is about this kid who's a superhero that fights these weird shape-shifting aliens, I think? The aliens' evil pursuits and junk are just as nonsensical as the kid vaporizing them with zero remorse. Also, the sister comes at her brother with a knife. <laughs> This anime is pretty notorious in Japan, so much so that there's an abundance of internet parodies online. At one point in time, Charge Man Ken basically shaped Japanese internet otaku meme culture. The Japanese memes actually revitalized this anime to the point that they now sell official merch for it. Just for the lols. Oze Thomas this one is a pretty unsettling photo, taken in a forest in Oze City, which is in Gunma Prefecture. It features the boy himself, Thomas the Tank Engine, Kun. Why? Because the internet. They sure do love Thomas Kun, and, and Shrek, and other things. But why does his face look like that? Why is his face so visibly warped? One site I found said that the Thomas was, at some point, repurposed as a type of kiln? 
Owning some kind of kiln oven thing shaped like Thomas Chan is kind of a weird flex, but okay. I'm a champion. You know the Energizer Bunny? Think that, but mentally scarring. Actually, no. If you've seen Toy Story 3, then it's kind of like these vibes. You know, this motherfucker. Well, it's not exactly that, but it's close. In spirit. So, here's the ad. Creepy, right? Especially the part where he literally just dies. Have any idea what this dude is advertising? Well, me neither. Well, until the end where it shows this. And what is this? A life insurance company of, of course. Actually, the whole dropping dead part makes sense now. It's poetic even. The ad is from 1975 and was made to promote the diamond insurance service provided by a company called Meiji Yasuda Life. It has some interesting voiceover. Here's a little taste of that. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm a... What this lad is repeating is the phrase, I'm a champion. And if that voice is familiar, it's the voice of Kenji Utsumi, who is a pretty well-known voice talent in Japan, known for quite a few anime. He voiced Shenlong in Dragon Ball, enough said. Isekai Hospital Isekai Hospital is an actual real hospital located in Kuki City, which is located in Saitama Prefecture. So, I mean, if you are in need of medical attention and you do happen to live there, then definitely look them up. Or, you know, literally just go there. The hospital was founded in 1998, and it's the earlier version of the hospital's official webpage that gathered some notoriety. This is due to the original webpage having flashing lights, abrasive music, and just a whole lot going on. The flashing lights themselves are described on some web pages as being reminiscent of the Porygon incident. <laughs> Definitely not what a hospital web page should be compared to, considering, well. So here's the original web page itself, slowed down so those flashing colors don't hurt your eyes, and yeah, this was once the official site for a real ass hospital. I feel like I'd get isekai'd if I stare at it too long. Wait. Maybe that's why it's called Isekai. That joke was horrible, I... I apologize. The original site was officially closed in 2013, but came back from the dead in 2015 with a more professional and non-seizure-inducing format. Oh, also, a 2014 anime's webpage parodied this original webpage, thus showing its status as a Japanese internet meme that people know and stuff, you know. Adult Dolly Dressups dot WMV It's this. I really don't have any other way to describe it, just just look at it. Chinese photo booth. Okay, let's let's be real here. A lot of girls use apps to make photos of themselves look more attractive. I would be lying if I said I didn't do it myself. My favorite app for that kind of stuff is Snow, by the way. It's it's good shit. Anyways, the precursor to this kind of stuff was Purikura. These are photo booths where you can take pics with your buds and edit them to look cute. I've also done this. It's like a normal ass photo booth. Demo sugoku sugoku kawaii desu yo. Searching the specific term brings forth these glorious images, but it's this one that's associated with it. This is what happens when you make your eyes too big in a purikura or photo editing app. This specific photo is Chinese in origin, I believe, as it was taken from a, you guessed it, Chinese photo booth. Or at least that's what I'm reading. There's nothing cursed about it, it just kind of gives people really uncanny valley vibes and people in Japan associate it with a demon or something from a horror game. The real question here is if this girl actually thought this looked cute though. Or if she's the one who edited it. it there's, there's a lot of questions here. Hanashite mite. 
If anyone here has any familiarity with Hitogata, you may be familiar with the Ad Council of Japan, or AC Japan. They're pretty well known for creating some pretty unsettling PSAs and have been doing so since their establishment in 1971. It's been commonly speculated that Hitogata was an ad council ad, and really something like Hitogata would definitely fit the bill as a lot of ad council commercials are really creepy. But we're not here to talk about Hitogata, we're here to talk about, uh, try not to talk. <laughs> This is an ad council PSA from 1997. It's mainly known for its off-putting and uncanny visuals as a face goes back and forth between crying and being happy. The purpose of this ad was to spread awareness of a suicide hotline. Not only that, but the song used in this ad is titled Yarare Chatta Ona no Ko, or The Girl Who Has Been Killed. With the context understood, the visuals are very fitting. Fitting yet ominous and kind of sad. Regardless, I do hope this ad reached the people who needed to see it and saved lives. Also, this ad was actually created by film students and was broadcasted through winning a competition. For this reason, the ad wasn't broadcasted as long as other AC ads and isn't too well known. This may be kind of a stretch, but perhaps Hitogata was also a student film briefly ran as a PSA. It might be worth looking into. The Akihabara Tape If you're familiar with my content, you may be familiar with this one. If not, here's the video where I go super in-depth with it and talk really slow. It was a narration choice. Though you're here right now, and if you want the abridged version, basically a dude in Tokyo in the early 1990s was going through a box of cassette tapes at a thrift store in Akihabara. You know, Weeaboo Town. And bought a cassette tape for only 50 yen, which is a little less than 50 cents in America monies. So they take the tape home and listen to it to find this song. never heard this song before and are unable to identify it. Fast forward to a few years later and the owner of the tape posted audio of it to Tuchan or Nichan in 2000. They later posted it to Nico Nico Doga in 2007 with nobody being able to identify the song. The only thing that came out of it so far is that Japanese people around the internet find the song really creepy and cursed. The song on the cassette tape I found in Akihabara is a search term considered forbidden for this reason. So why is it creepy? A lot of the viewers of my video didn't really get why it's so ominous, but people in Japan mainly state that it's the whole mysterious cassette tape part, or that the lyrics sound somewhat symbolic, as if it's referencing suicide. And there's also the fact that the song was sung in a minor key, which makes it sound a little off-putting to some people. As of right now, the song remains unidentified, though there have, however, been dedicated efforts in the meantime to actually try and figure out what it is and who, you know, made it. This Reddit user in particular has made impressive progress in identifying various elements of the song, even going as far as identifying instruments used, narrowing down a possible record label, which is thought to be Victor, by the way, and even attempting to attribute the song to an unreleased anime. There is a lot of spicy stuff in here, and I 100% plan to make an update video on the Akiba tape in the near future, so if you are a fan of that mystery, please look forward to it. I, I, won't, I won't talk slow this time, I promise. Or will I? Ayaya Suigin Aya Matsuda is a Japanese singer. She's likely best known for her work in the idol group Hello Project before graduating and moving on to other stuff in 2009. Here she is. 
Now, do you all want to see her with a centipede in her mouth? See, what this forbidden search term leads to is a site that features Aya herself. It's kind of a gif, it's like combined and it moves and stuff. It starts with an image of her with her eyes closed, then cuts to an image of her with her eyes and mouth open as a centipede slithers out of her mouth before she slurps it back up. Like a noodle. Why? For... for the gains, bro. Beetle Beetle. Okay, can we just talk for a minute, just, just, just for a second, about how much this song slaps? Oh, no! Beetle Beetle is the name of a 1991 song by the Japanese rock band Higashu, who has been active since 1978. The music video to the song itself is what freaks people out. It's very much something that looks like something that was produced in 1991. Or if one of those dumb Snapchat or TikTok filters were mixed up in a blender and then just kind of spilled out over the floor of a nightclub, like a 90s nightclub, that's, that's basically what it looks like. It's very uncanny in some parts, and that in itself is off-putting to some people in Japan. I mean, if this came on TV in a dark room in the middle of the night, and, like, you woke up to see it, then yeah, it's, it's kinda creepy. However, I personally think it's pretty aesthetic. Face Robo As... as the name suggests... is... is... Tenshi Hime no Ai no Kiriku. The title of this one translates to, uh, maybe, I think, Kiriku of Meeting the Angel Princess. Uh, please keep in mind that this is my personal interpretation of Tenshi Hime no Ai no Kiriku. It's all in hiragana, and the eye mentioned could be referencing two different things. One could be the other eye, which means love, or the eye that means to meet someone. And then there's also the Kiriku thing, which I am not sure what that means. It might be an amatomatopoeia, or maybe I'm just not affluent in, like, Japanese internet terms, and it's just, like, flying right over my head. But yeah, I, I think I'm gonna put my money on Kiriku of the Angel Princess's love, I guess. Anyways, enough about the name, though. What is it? What What is this? Well, it is a blog. A blog that is kind of unsettling and has a lot of spooky, scary, creepypasta-esque imagery. Kind of like Jeff the Killer-chan kind of stuff. The images are not all that's there though. There's also the text of the blog. It's very disjointed and cryptic. The final post is particularly odd as it features these two images. One being this blurry thing with a green background, while the other is this dude who looks like Jeff Chan's wacky zany cousin or uncle, I don't, I don't freaking know. When you click these images, they load in a higher quality and more details are apparent. This makes it more creepy, especially the one with the face. Furby Microwave Hey, ever seen what happens when you microwave a Furby? Well, turns out it's pretty messed up. You're welcome. Asari no Uta. Is it weird that this one's my favorite on the list? Just just cuz how weird and disturbing it is. Not even like intentionally like it is intentionally disturbing, but it's not... It's... I don't know, just look at it. It's great. I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's great and it's awful and it's something somebody made with a production value. Just... just look at it. Chibi Mariko Yume This specific search term involves the famous long-running shoujo manga and anime Chibi Mariko-chan. That in itself is perfectly fine to Google, wholesome even. When you search Chibi Mariko Yume, however, that's when things get a little real. Really, if you're used to horror manga or anything remotely surreal looking, this isn't really bad at all. It's pretty, it's pretty tame in my opinion, though I do watch some pretty messed up stuff. The thing that's kind of off-putting about it is it features a lot of really bizarre imagery that's not at all expected of Chibi Mariko-chan and is very distinct and different and unsettling, as I said. 
I mean, if I were to look at this from the perspective of somebody who's native Japanese and grew up in Japan and grew up watching the show every day as a child and associated with happy, comforting things, I could definitely see why this could be potentially unsettling. So, this is an actual serialized manga chapter that was written by the author herself in the 1990s for Ribbon Magazine, which is a pretty well-known shoujo manga magazine that serialized a lot of pretty well-known shoujo manga, of course. This specific surreal story was serialized as the 98th chapter of Chibi Madoko-chan and saw an initial release in the magazine. It was meant to be included in the 13th volume of Chibi Madoko-chan, but the author decided to omit it completely due to the subject matter frightening children and them getting a lot of hate mail about this. In an author's note in the 13th volume, it stated that the author was stressed and overwhelmed when initially writing the 98th chapter. This is the reason for the stark shift in tone and why she did not have a chance to read it over before she unleashed it onto the world. Upon rereading it again, she realized it was pretty spooky and prevented the 98th chapter from seeing a release in volume 13. Because of this, the actual serialized version in Nibon magazine is very sought after as it's the only way to read this chapter officially. At one point, according to what I've read on the internet, this chapter was lost media and a lot of rumors about how dark it actually was were circulated around the web and people kind of got a more spooky impression of what this chapter is. Buken Gazo Jose. This is a photo taken from a 2011 real estate listing for a then 29-year-old home in Okayama Prefecture. Most of it seems pretty normal, right? Until this? <laughs> I'm I'm pausing for dramatic effect. If you look closely into the bottom of the closet, you can see what looks like the head of a woman with long black hair. People online have speculated that this is an example of supernatural photography and that the supposed woman in the closet is a ghost. Now, obviously, this type of exposure wouldn't bode well for the real estate people trying to, you know, get people interested in actually living here. And because of that, they eventually removed the photo with the spoopy ghost lady. Honestly, I wonder who eventually moved into that house, though, and if anyone actually did. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. <laughs> Why? Stop that, it's illegal. It's illegal, stop. Screaming. The ye dinosaur in 4K over here be like... <laughs> No, but seriously, I really hate this thing. It... it scares me. Here is yet another off-putting commercial for your viewing pleasure. I'm assuming if you're a fan of Hitogata, then you really dig this kind of stuff. There's a lot of it. This ad title translates to the daughter selling the red yarn hat. It's very odd. It seems pretty normal from the perspective of somebody who doesn't understand Japanese or what they're saying, though it is definitely worth noting that the dialogue heard within the ad strongly suggests that you will be responsible for a broken family if you don't buy Microsoft Office. It's, it's so weird, dude. Like, I had to watch it multiple times in order to understand the commercial and its threatening aura. Even the upload description on YouTube is like, it's so simple, but I'm scared. <laughs> Another weird thing about this one is that nobody can attribute an air date to it. This means it's unknown if the ad ever aired at all. One thing we do know, however, is that the Microsoft Office logo used in the ad dates from approximately 2003 to 2007, so at least there's that. Honestly, I really like talking about these weird Japanese ads. There is a lot of them, like I just said. If you want to see more than that, comment and let me know. Like, literally comment, and I quote, Japanese ads are weird and cool, do the talking thing for an extended period of time more so regarding Japanese ads. Or something like that, I, I don't know how people talk. The Living Doll. 
Dolls have a distinct cultural prominence in Japanese culture. They have roots in traditional folklore as well as success in the modern era with many popular doll brands. The doll featured within the search term is prominent for another reason. That reason being, it's super duper cursed. Behold Exhibit A, it's a doll that had been thought to be cursed, so cursed, in fact, that it's said that simply looking at a photo of the original doll will curse anyone who lays eyes upon it. These photos feature a replica doll featured on a television show that aired in the 1980s. The original doll can be seen in the black and white image in the, you know, the image of the show that's in the screenshot. And according to multiple accounts, this is the doll that did all the cursing. There is a lot to this story, so much so that I can discuss it at much greater lengths at a later date, like this doll fucks shit up on air on TV shows and everything, and it's a whole thing, like it spanned a decade to my knowledge. <laughs> For now, here's the TLDR version of it all, though. Junji Inagawa is a Japanese scriptwriter. He's known for writing traditional Japanese plays. It's in the late 70s that he was presented with a new project. It involved an old doll that was meant to be used as a prop within one of his plays. The doll was odd to Inagawa as it strongly resembled a girl he saw outside his taxi the night prior to actually seeing the doll in person. As the play began its run, people involved in the production started getting hurt. At one point, the doll ended up being brought to a psychic who said it was possessed by a young girl who died during World War II. According to the psychic, because the doll was never taken to a shrine, the spirit became restless and turned into a demon. That's according to these legends, that is. Also according to these legends, that psychic later died from unknown reasons. Mite Keta Netatama I found it! That's, that's what that means. It, it translates to I found it. And what did we find? Well, it looks to me that she found you. <laughs> McDonald's no wadai this very cursed video features a Japanese YouTuber by the name Ashita no Wadai reviewing various foods from McDonald's in Japan. That in itself is pretty innocent, but the video itself is responsible for a famous Japanese urban legend due to the subject matter within it. This is primarily because it starts to jump cut to a lot of really ominous text and imagery towards the end of the video. There's a lot of other really cryptic messages scattered throughout, and the Japanese internet has tried to make sense of it all. Toilet restaurant. This one's just more gross than anything. It's basically one of those kinds of pictures you'd see with an article or caption that's like, LOL, look how weird Japan is, LOL. Only this isn't even in Japan. But it's a popular search term in Japan that, you know, people don't like. But anyways, as the name suggests, it's a real restaurant that serves its food in small toilet bowls. There is actually a few of these restaurants, the one particularly associated with this forbidden search term, to my knowledge, is the modern toilet restaurant in Taiwan. The same country that created bubble tea! I prefer bubble tea. <laughs> It's a chain with three locations throughout the country and has been closed before due to people legit using some of the decorative and very public toilets in the public area of the restaurant. Fun. I've noticed that some internet stuff incorrectly says this restaurant is in Japan, and by looking at it, it's really easy to assume that it is Japanese, but again, it's not. The creator of the modern toilet restaurant said that he did get the idea from a character from an anime, though, and that... that makes sense. Ah, uh... Ah. That is all. Katsute no Seishin Byoin the source material for this one isn't Japanese, however, a trend in collecting this kind of imagery was commonplace on the Japanese internet for a while. 
The imagery itself involves antique photos taken in psychiatric hospitals. You can likely see why this would be somewhat disturbing to look up. Custom Blankets The internet isn't just terrifying, it's also hilarious, while still being simultaneously terrifying. See, there's these blankets you can buy online on a few different sites. I've personally seen them on sites like Etsy and Amazon. With these specific blankets, you can print people's faces on them. Which people specifically? Who, who do you want on these blankets? Well, anyone you have a picture of, I guess. The real question here is, do these people know you have a blanket with their face printed all over it? I mean, maybe they'd be into that, I, I don't know. Mickey Mouse's Punishment As you likely recall, this video is the first in a series about Japanese keywords you should never search. We're only on level 1 of 7, and as we finish up tier 1 and go a little deeper, things are going to get gradually darker. This specific incident is among the darker things, and the wiki classifies it as tier 1, so I feel including it provides a good reflection of what a mixed bag this wiki is. I do have a lot of thoughts on this wiki, actually. I'll, I'll get into that later. That, that's a whole other thing entirely. You see, tier 1 has a lot going on. It was tricky to try and compile a small representation of what makes tier 1, well, tier 1. It goes from memes to some pretty messed up stuff. Long story short, this one's a bit more serious than the previous entries in this tier. Please keep that in mind. So, Mickey Mouse's punishment is in reference to a supposed type of punishment a Fukuoka teacher supposedly used on a child in 2003. The actual name of this case in Japan is the Fukuoka City Bullying by Teachers case. The story itself, defining said teacher as a murder teacher, is notorious and got a lot of attention when the story was initially developing. According to the reports, this teacher mentally and physically abused one of their students to the point of encouraging suicide. They again, supposedly, had names for each specific punishment. Anpanman's punishment would involve pinching cheeks, Mickey Mouse's punishment was the ears, etc. The result of such abuse was claims that the child suffered from severe PTSD as a result. Though what seemed to be a pretty straightforward and horrendous case ended up being very different from what people following it expected. You see, everything, every element of this story that made it so horrible was made up. Uh, research it on your own, there is a lot going on with this, but can people just not? Can they just not do stuff like this? Anyways, that is tier one, and like I said, there is a lot, a lot in this wiki. This wiki, as I said I would talk about in a little more detail, is all over the freaking place. I don't believe there's a lot of moderators available on this site, but it is the most definitive resource of this stuff. And there's a lot of ad council stuff if you're into that. There's a lot of like urban internet mysteries and websites. I'm trying to kind of save those for some other type of video later on, but I mainly just want to compile things that people in Japan think you should not search. Things that the Japanese populace think are really creepy and upsetting. And I think from an ethnographical... Wow, that's not how you pronounce that. From an ethnographic standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, I think it's really fascinating to see what upsets certain people that are from certain cultures that are not of American or any kind of Western culture, if that makes sense. So hopefully you guys like this. We are just getting started and it's gonna get a little more messed up as we go along. I promise to be respectful. Uh, tiers 2 and 3 really aren't that bad, but you know, we'll, we'll get into it later on. It's something I plan to release throughout the year so you know if you're into it look look forward to it i'm gonna go now and i will see you you know in the next video bye guys